Hi, this is Brian Jones. I'm a program manager in Office. I work on XML file formats um, and some programmability stuff. And today I am going to give you a little demo around the open XML formats. And specifically, I want to try and talk a little bit about just the basics, kind of the, the key things that go into building a document. Um, for people that have experimented with the file formats already, uh, they may seem a little bit intimidating at first because when you go and um, open up the files, there's a lot of information in there. But a lot of that stuff is really um, extra data like metadata and document settings and things that, while it's important to persist because that's what exists in the file, when you're building a solution, it's not necessarily something that you really care as much about. Um, it really just depends on what type of fidelity you're going for. And so I want to just kind of show the key things that just go into making like a very basic document. So for those of you that have already played around with stuff a bit, you know that uh, the new Office Open XML formats are essentially just a zip file with a bunch of XML in them. Now, the way that all of the information inside of that zip, all of those XML files, relate together is by following a set of conventions that we call the Open Packaging Conventions. There's really a simple set of rules for um, how to put information inside of a zip and allow all those pieces of information to kind of relate together. So what I'm going to do is create a really basic Word document that has um, a little bit of text, a hyperlink, and a picture. Okay. So first things I need, I need to have the XML for the document itself, which is right here. I'll go double click on that and open that up in uh, Internet Explorer. And so here you can see we just have some basic simple XML. We've got a paragraph here that says, hello world. We've got another paragraph here with a hyperlink, and that paragraph says, click here for Brian Jones's blog. And then the third paragraph has a picture in it. The other thing that I have is I have a picture. So there's that picture that I want to include in the file. Um, that's me when I was in college and a little bit, uh, a little less wise. I don't think my wife would let me do that now, um, but at the time it seemed like a good idea. Um, and you could tell that I was kind of questioning that decision towards at that point. Um, the other thing that I need f for the open packaging conventions, I need to go and describe what kind of content each of these these two pieces are. And so this content types.xml part, if I go and open that up, this just goes and says that everything that ends with the .jpg extension is a content type image slash JPEG. It says that for everything that ends with .xml is of type word processing ML document main. So that's just that's the content type that the main word document part is in. If I had other parts like a header or a footer, then of course I would be able to say that the default extension for XML is is all of those. So I would go I could go and also have overrides for specific parts. So I'm going to say that that these that the JPEG is of type JPEG, that the XML is of type word processing and all document. And then I also have this other content type for everything that ends in dot rels. And it says it's of type package relationships. And package relationships are how we go in and actually navigate through a file that follows open packaging conventions. The relationships live up here in this underscore rels folder. So if I go and open that up, you'll see there's two relationship files. The first one is just this dot rels and this exists in every file that follows open packaging conventions. And this is the first place you start. This is how you know where the next spot to go when parsing the file is. If I go and open that up, and it's a little slow, which is funny because it's very simple. Um, the relation, there's only one relationship here. This is the, the root relationship, and it just goes and says that okay, this is a document of type office document, and if you go and follow this relationship, you're going to get a part that is of type office document, relationships office document, um, and the target for that part is document.xml. So this is what tells me, okay, I need to go now to that document.xml part. Once I get to that document.xml part, I can go and start parsing that, and I'll go and open that back up again so we can look at what, what's in there. And as I go and start parsing that, I see, okay, here's a first paragraph that says, hello world. Now here's a hyperlink, 
And you'll notice the URL for the hyperlink is not there in line. And that's because any reference to another part or even to external resources is always done via those relationships. And so this just says it's using the relationship that's ID2. And so let's remember that. And then the third paragraph is a picture. And it says that the image data for that picture can be found at relationship RID4. So we got RID2 and RID4. So let's go and close that down. And now the, the way that we find the relationships for this part now is we just go into the underscore rels folder again that's in the same directory as that part. And we find a file that says the same name with dot rels at the end. So we've got document.xml.rels. So now if we go and open that up, you'll see that we have two relationships here. The first one is a relationship of type hyperlink, and it's pointing at the URL as my blog, and it's a relationship that's an external relationship. The default for any relationship is internal, which is what the second one is. The second relationship, RID4, is of type image, and it's pointing at that image1.jpg. So every relationship has an ID, a type, and a target, and then it can also specify its target mode. The benefit of using these relationships is that you can now take any file that follows these open packaging conventions and really quickly find out how all the pieces of that file relate to each other and also what external resources it uses. So if you need to do link fix up, if you're moving a file from one place to another and you want to go grab everything else that goes along with that file, it's much easier to do that. So I'm going to go and close that down. And that's all we need to make up this, this document. We've got the main part here, the document.xml part that describes the hyperlink in the image, and then its relationships then go and tell us where that hyperlink goes to, and it points to this image. So I'm going to take all of those parts and send it to a zip file. I'm just going to zip it up. And now if I right-click on this and say open with Microsoft Word, Then we get that document with Hello World, click here to go to my blog, and then you have the picture as well. So that's all it took. Um, of course, if I did not want to have that picture or that hyperlink and I just wanted to say Hello World, I wouldn't even needed to have that extra relationship file, but I wanted to show a little bit more about how the open packaging conventions themselves work, especially for those people that worked with word processing ML from um, Office 2003. You'll see that a lot of this stuff is very similar, but really the big change is just that we went and broke things out into multiple pieces to make them a little bit easier to work with um, and threw it all into a zip, which, which then allowed us to store things like images in their native form rather than having to base64 encode them. So that's it. That's how to, how to do a really basic, simple Word document.